Okay, thank you very much. Let's continue. We're looking at the action of uh, parathormone on blood phosphate levels. Uh, we know that PTH decreases blood levels of uh, phosphate by increasing its urine, urinary excretion. Okay, so uh, it acts on the bone along with calcium resorption. PTH also increases phosphate uh, absorption. On the kidney, its effect of PTH by which phosphate is excreted through urine, PTH increases phosphate excretion by inhibiting the reabsorption of phosphate from the renal tubules. It acts mainly on the proximal convoluted tubule. So PTH increases calcium reabsorption, but increases phosphate secretion. But you're going to see calcitonin is different. And then on gastrointestinal tract, parathormone increases the absorption of phosphate from the GI tract through uh, calcitriol. So just take note of that. Now this, this is diagram is showing the phosphaturic effect of uh, PTH. Okay, what's the mechanism of the phosphaturic effect of uh, PTH? So PTH binds to its, the receptor on the kidneys, which is a G-protein coupled receptor. And uh, it, uh, the G-protein coupled receptor, it has the alpha subunit that activate the adenylyl cyclase. So it converts ATP to cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP increases uh, or activates the protein kinases. We know that kinases in biochemistry, they phosphorylate. Okay, so it will increase phosphorylation. So this phosphorylation will result into the inhibition of this pump, the co-transporters, the sodium phosphate uh, co-transporters. Therefore, therefore, more phosphates will remain in the, in the lumen. So in short, what we are trying to say, PTH inhibits the operation of the sodium phosphate co-transporters. That's what we call the phosphaturic effect of uh, PTH. There's this another objective. Describe the mechanism by which PTH increases the absorption of phosphate from the GI tract through calcitriol. Describe the mechanism by which PTH increases the absorption of phosphate from GIT through the through calcitriol. This one it was on the intestine on the kidneys, but this question we are talking of how does it increase absorption of phosphate from the GI tract? So the sequence of events are straightforward. PTH we know it converts 25 hydrocholecalciferol to 125-dihydrocholecalciferol or calcitriol, which is an active form of vitamin D3 in the kidneys. Now, calcitriol increases the synthesis of calcium-induced atipase in the intestinal epithelium. And atipase increases the synthesis of alkaline phosphatase. Okay. Now, the alkaline phosphatase will increase the absorption of phosphate from the intestine along with uh, calcium. Okay, so this is the mechanism. Phosphatase is increased, which increases the absorption of phosphate from the intestine along with uh, calcium. Okay, just on the phosphatase, uh, one thing you need to know about the alkaline phosphatase it is it increases um, or one thing you need it is pre, alkaline phosphate is present in the liver bone intestine the placenta it's also present in the liver mainly in the biliary tract epithelium it's it can also be used as a marker of uh, obstruction of the biliary system and uh, we need to know that alkaline phosphatase is a uh, activity is important for the mineralization of bone 
and it represents a useful biochemical marker for bone formation. So osteoblast will express the bone or tissue non-specific isoform, which we call the alkaline phosphatase. Okay. The other thing we need to know about alkaline phosphatase is that um, it is the it is a protein. Okay, just from the word phosphatase, meaning it's a protein. And um, its physiological role is dephosphorylating compounds. So this enzyme is found in a multitude of organisms. Okay. And the, the, the levels of alkaline phosphatase in blood is checked through the, the ALP test, which is often part of a routine blood test. So the levels of this enzyme in the blood depends on factors such as age, sex, or blood type. And uh, blood levels of alkaline phosphatase also increases by two or four times during pregnancy. Uh, this results in additional alkaline phosphatase produced by the, the, the placenta. So we're going to talk about it later on when we look at some clinical uh, understanding. But we need to know that elevated levels of alkaline phosphatase may, may occur in conditions such as uh, osteomalacia, osteoblastic bone tumors, uh, bone conditions, okay. So this is the mechanism by which uh, <coughs> phosphate from GIT through the calcitriol. And then I have this diagram. It's showing the mechanism of action of PTH. So when the PTH binds to, this, to a cell, how does it act? Okay. The, the parathormone uh, receptor, this one, it's a G-protein coupled receptor. And there are three types. We have the, the PTH receptor 1, we have the receptor 2, and the PTH receptor 3. So the PTH receptor 1, this one is the one which is physiological, uh, more important than the other two types. So PTH receptor 1, it mediates the action of PTH and PTH-related protein. Okay. So on the target cell, like on the osteoblasts, if it's on the kidneys, if it's on the GIT, the target cell PTH binds with the PTH receptor 1, which is coupled to a G protein, and forms what we call a hormone receptor complex. The hormone receptor complex, it's, uh, it causes formation of cyclic AMP. Okay which acts on second messenger for the hormone by activating other enzymes like the protein kinases. And then you are going to see physiological uh, actions. And then we have regulation of PTH secretion. Now, the blood levels of calcium is the main factor regulating the, the secretion of PTH. To regulate is to control. So it's not under the control of the hypothalamus, nor the anterior pituitary gland, like we saw in the previous hormones. It is controlled mainly by the plasma levels of calcium. Okay, so whenever the calcium levels decrease, the parathyroid glands will increase the secretion of PTH. Okay, whenever the, at the same time, Whenever the levels of plasma calcium levels increase, the thyroid C cells will be stimulated, increasing the secretion of calcitonin. At the same time, these same high levels of calcium will inhibit the, the chief cells from secreting PTH. Okay, so this is uh, straightforward. Now, what fact, how is uh, PTH secreted? We saw that once PTH has been synthesized, 
it is stored in uh, secretory vesicles. So the PTH, they have what we call the calcium sensing receptors linked via a G protein to the phospholipase C. When ECF calcium increases, calcium binds to the calcium sensing receptors and activates phospholipase C. Phospholipase C increases the IP3 calcium levels, which are second messengers, and these are going to inhibit the PTH secretion. So like in hypercalcemia, there will be decrease in PTH. Is it true? Yes. If we have high levels of calcium in the body, we don't want increased absorption of calcium. And we know the hormone that increases absorption is PTH. So this hormone should be secreted in, should be, should be inhibited. So hypercalcemia will be sensed by the a calcium sensing receptors, which are linked to a G protein. And then it will activate the phospholipase C. Okay, and then there will be transduction mechanism. At the end of the day, we have decreased levels of cyclic AMP which decreases the PTH release. Okay, it will, it will decrease PTH synthesis. Okay. But hypocalcemia, what does it do? It binds to the calcium sensing receptors. Okay, and it will increase the expression of the cyclic AMP with the second messenger and it will increase PTH release. Okay, so before I look at applied physiology, or maybe let me look at uh, disorders associated with PTH. There is hypoparathyroidism and hyperparathyroidism. Okay, a brief talk of hypoparathyroidism. Hypoparathyroidism is, uh, is decrease in blood calcium levels, or it's also called hypocalcemia. Hyperparathy hypoparathyroidism is due to decrease in calcium levels, and it can be caused by surgical removal of the parathyroid gland, which we call parathyroidectomy, or it can also be caused by thyroidectomy itself. It can also be caused by autoimmune disease, where antibodies start to fight the chief cells. Also, it can be due to deficiency of receptors of PTH in target cells. Okay. And then hyperparathyroidism excessive secretion of PTH. This is, it causes hypercalcemia, and there are two types. There is primary hyperparathyroidism and secondary hyperparathyroidism. But in some books, they also include the tertiary hyperparathyroidism. In primary hyperparathyroidism is due to the development of a tumor in one or more parathyroid gland. Sometimes tumor may develop in all the four glands. And then we have secondary hyperparathyroidism is due to the physiological compensatory hypertrophy of the parathyroid gland. Let me repeat, secondary. There's a secondary underlying factor. So this one is due to the physiological compensatory hypertrophy of the parathyroid gland in response to hypocalcemia, which occurs due to other pathological conditions, such as chronic renal failure, vitamin D deficiency, rickets. Okay. And then we have tertiary hyperparathyroidism is due to hyperplasia or abnormal increase in the number of cells. Or, or abnormal increase in the number of cells of all the parathyroid glands that develop due to chronic secondary hyperparathyroidism. Okay. We'll still, this is another long topic on its own. 
but it's just important to understand uh, the, the, these two terminologies. Remember, in hypoparathyroidism, there will be low levels of calcium. Okay? So anything that affects calcium, we know the function of calcium. So if there's low levels of calcium, we have, co we have conditions such as uh, hyperreflexia and convulsions. We have, uh, we know calcium is needed for dilatation of the, it's needed for the heart functions. So it will affect the, the cardiovascular changes to cause heart failure. Okay, so any, you can, we can link this condition to calcium. Okay, now hyperthyroidism is due to excessive secretion of calcium. If we have too much calcium, we, we expect to see abdominal symptoms. Okay, such as dis depression of the nervous systems, constipation, Okay, so this is where we end. The next, we'll look at uh, calcitonin.